My name is Hannah Holman. I wanted to introduce you to some women cellists that you may not be so familiar with. This is the eighth in the series called Influential Female Cellists. And we are going to head back across the pond for the next person. I'd like to introduce you to British cellist May Muckle. Those of you who have gone to the Royal Academy of Music in London may know her name more than others. She's been called the first woman to have an international career and the female Casals. May was born in May of 1880 in London to a musical family. Her father, Leopold, was a very famous organ builder, and in fact, he is credited with creating the first coin slot mechanical music machine, the precursor to the jukebox. May was the youngest of nine children, some of whom didn't survive past their first few years. She had two older sisters who took up even less ladylike instruments than the cello. One played the trumpet and one played the double bass. And they picked these instruments because they read an article that said that there were more positions and therefore more money for people playing these instruments. May started the cello at the age of nine and by the age of 11, she was fully supporting herself. She entered the Royal Academy of Music at the age of 13 in 1893 and graduated in four years when she was 17, having won every possible prize for the cello. She then went on to tour Australia, Asia, Africa, and North and South America. And she was considered one of the top ranking cellists irrespective of her sex. From a review in the New York Evening Post from 1908, they said, she has a remarkably large tone. Her C string sounds like an organ pipe, and her tone is not only big, but luscious. Technical difficulties have no terrors for her. She performed the Victor Herbert Cello Concerto No. 2 in the proms in London in 1909. Some anonymous donor was so taken with her playing that they offered to buy her any instrument of her choosing from the Hill Shop in London. She chose a magnificent cello by Domenico Montagnana. Uh, those instruments are so beautiful. <laughs> um, I don't actually know where that cello is today, but I do know that she loaned that cello out to um, support young cellists, especially female, that were about to make their important debuts. Chamber music was highly important for May. She, with her pianist sister Anne and American violinist Maud Powell, formed the Maud Powell Trio and toured the United States. She also performed many times with Rebecca Clark in string quartets and piano quartets and she was also in one of the first all-female string quartets. She also performed with Casals, Jacques Thibault, Lionel Turtis, and Arthur Rubinstein. She gave the British premieres of two of my favorite pieces, the Ravel and the Kodai duos, and was a huge champion for living composers. Holst and Von Williams dedicated pieces to her. She also did some composing herself, some of which was under the pseudonym Jeremy Baines, because you couldn't be a female composer. Two interesting things she did were one, convince the owners of a building near the Wigmore Hall, it was an office building, to not only let her have an apartment there, but to convert the whole building to apartments and rent them to musicians so that nobody could complain about practicing. Pretty smart. She also created a mainly musicians club in a converted basement near the Oxford Circus tube station. This became a gathering place for music and culinary delights and later served as an air raid shelter during World War II. Injured in a car accident while on tour in Africa, she didn't let that slow her down. In fact, she was still doing barnstorming concerts where she would just go to a barn or a church and Xerox her programs and pass, pass the hat at the end of the concert. At the age of 79, she did one such barnstorming concert in North Carolina at the age of 79, and the cellist Elizabeth Cowling, who we will talk about later, heard her. She said of May, her technique is pre-Casal's era. Her musicality overrode the old-fashioned fingerings and heavy use of slides. You can actually hear May play. There's some Victor recordings that are up on YouTube of her playing. You should go check them out. Rebecca Clark and others created a May Muckle Prize at the Royal Academy of Music for Cellists in May's honor upon her death in 1963. 
She seems like a real force of nature. I wish I could have met her. Until next time, thank you so much for joining me in this journey of learning about women cellists from the past. I love hearing from you, so please feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to me on my website at hannahholmancello.com.